Hello everybody and welcome to our latest installment of TB Talks. Today's TB Talks is a very germane one given the current environment. I'm joined today by Scott Barley, Director of Business Client Support with Sprint, Peter Ryan, Principal Analyst with Ryan Strategic Advisory, and Terry Reibold, Managing Director, Work at Home Global Strategy and Develop Deployment with Teleperformance. I'm your moderator today. My name is Amit Shankadas, Executive Vice President of Market Engagement at Teleperformance and have the honor of facilitating today's webinar. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This is meant to be a highly interactive session. There are several resources available for you to download in the resource widget. Please take advantage of these. Um, you will see multiple icons at the bottom of your console. If you have questions, we'd love for you to interact with us. Please submit your questions in the Q&A window at any time. Do, th do this anytime during this webinar. We will address questions and answers at the designated session towards the end. Should you have technical issues, click on the Help widget, and if you'd like to reach us on the email widget. So what is TP Talks? TP Talks is a series of 30 minutes bite-sized webinar segments designated to help you as curators of your customer experience. This is to help you learn from best practices, big trends, innovations, and real-world success stories from people just like yourself. A little bit about your host today, Teleperformance. Teleperformance serves as a strategic partner to the world's leading brands by providing digitally integrated business services. It offers a one-office support service model combining customer experience management, back office services, and business process knowledge services. These end-to-end -end digital solutions guarantee successful customer interactions and optimize business processes. If you're looking to advance your brand through digital transformation by combining high-tech and high-touch with a Lean Six, Six Sigma discipline, Teleperformance can help make each of those interactions simpler, faster, and safer. We are particularly, particularly proud of the awards we win and the recognition we get from industry bodies, particularly like Great Place to Work and in the various leadership quadrants. But the recognition we receive from our clients for the ability to help them curate their customer experience and make a palpable difference to their brand is very much a manifestation of our mission. Let's get right to it and let me introduce our cast of panelists today. Scott Barley heads a diverse business client support organization at Sprint. He's responsible for strategy development, implementation, execution, and operational delivery of B2B support, including all B2B care centers and B2B care digitalization. Scott joined Sprint in 1997 after Sprint's acquisition of the IT consulting company, Paranet. Peter Ryan has been at the forefront of contact center services market advisory for over a decade. Over the course of his career, he has advised contact center outsourcers, their clients, industry associations, and governments all over the world on matters ranging from vertical market penetration to service delivery to best practices. Terry Reibold oversees the global Waha deployment strategy for teleperformance, focusing on internal and client-facing discussions on how to integrate work at home as a complement to the overall SIG strategy. Scott, Peter, Terry, thank you so much for joining us today. So with that introduction of the star panelist, yo, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. Okay, let's actually, let's start with a poll first and we'll have a little fun with this. Um, so for all of you on the webinar, if you can take a quick moment and respond to this, the question is, have you deployed a work at home agent model? I say a little fun because I suspect there won't be many that will say, do not know the model. But if you take a moment to respond in a couple of seconds here, I will forward this to see the poll results. Here we go. So in full production, the vast majority of folks on this call, no surprise there. I'm glad there isn't anybody on this call who said, don't know the model. And it's probably a signal of the times that we are all in full production or in at least partial production with some of our work at home efforts. Let's get right to the first question then. And Scott, I'll put this 
to you first, if you don't mind. Um, you've been doing work at home for a while at Sprint. What got you started on the path to work at home? Yeah, so I, I came from a consulting and managing field deployment background, so it was pretty natural. And, you know, one of the necessities that we have in this business is every once in a while you have to close down a site. And, you know, one of the trends we typically see is as the site closes, your performance goes dramatically up. Well, almost 10 years ago, we had a site that was closing that by the time we get down to the last, you know, 50 to 100 agents, the site performance was so strong, we posed the question, why wouldn't we want to keep those people? They're doing such an amazing job. Um, so we converted the remainder of that site to work from home and kept it um, in the operation. And uh, like I said, almost 10 years later, many of those people are still with us because the attrition is so low once you go to work from home. So this was a business. This is a business imperative that drove it. How long ago did you say, Scott? Uh, it was almost ten years ago. So you've been uh, one of the early starters on on work at home. And Peter, from an industry perspective, it's it's probably unusual to have a company that's done this for that long. Where are where do you see the work at home landscape globally? Yeah, Amit. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and it's great to be on. The webinar with yourself, with Scott, and with Terry today. And, uh, you know, I'll take a, a bit of a time travel uh, modus operandi if I can for a second. You know, when I think about where the industry was 10 years ago when, when Scott would have been getting involved, I, I think it was very, very new. It was a very fertile territory. But there was a lot of comments and concerns that I was collecting, at least uh, in the M analysis work I was doing back then, with regards to uncertainty about the applicability of work at home in, in the broad mainstream scale. And I, I think that significantly times have changed and obviously circumstances have changed them as well. You know, as we were sitting here and we're looking at these poll results, and we look at the number of organizations from uh, across a swath of sectors that are indicating that they're using work at home, I think it speaks very much not just to the applicability of that business model as we're examining the circumstances we find ourselves in today unfortunately, but also the value that this business model over the course of the past three or four years, I believe, has really started to bring home the bacon with regards to what it can deliver in terms of a quality labor force, in terms of a workforce that you can scale up and scale down very quickly, in regards to the ability to seamlessly manner, manage end user interactions in as good, if not a better circumstance than you might be able to do in a contact center. Uh, th there's so much dy dynamism around this this business model that we've been witnessing as new companies and as new industries take it up. As far as I'm concerned, for work at home, the sky really is the limit. And as we're talking over the course of this webinar today, I think we're going to get into some reasons later on about why circumstances are, are dictating that, especially now. But definitely the business model has grown in its applicability and in terms of its more mainstream element, is, as far as I'm concerned, really over the course of the last couple of years. So when you think about it from, from our perspective, uh, looking at it as a complement to our brick and mortar strategy and not a competitor too, uh, and I'm talking about business as usual, uh, you know, there, we can look at seasonality, we can look at uh, hard to staff shifts, all those sorts of things where work at home really can be a benefit and, and, it's, and that's another area of, of significant growth that we've seen along the way here to, to add to what Peter was saying. So to that point, um, Scott, I'll put this to you. You've done this for a while, and um, you know, you've obviously seen some business benefits. What, what are those that you've seen over the years? Yeah, so e even prior to the last couple of weeks, and we'll talk more about that here in a, in a little bit, um, even prior to that, you see significantly lower attrition. Employee satisfaction is, is much higher. Um, obvious cost benefits. And if you, um, if you really work with your leadership team and deploy it with the right policies and the right practices, you really see higher performance from the folks working from home or those that can tra transition to work from home. So really nice benefits that we've seen, um, but you do have to execute it um, with the real mindset of, of that performance. 
Sure. To, uh, and, and this is, I think, you know, actually, let's jump right into the addressing the elephant in the room to your point about there's a business benefit that you alluded to, but there's also the business benefit to uh, business continuity. And, you know, there's a difference between working from home, which is what most of us on this call are probably doing, and working at home um, in terms of deploying s service from home. Scott, let's start with you first. You know, with the current crisis, with what we have going on, how have you leveraged this model for business continuity? Yeah, so um, one of the benefits we had is already being deployed, already having this solution in place for our internal teams um, that I manage as well as our partner teams with, with teleperformance. Uh, having the model already in place, we were able to deploy very rapidly uh, keep our service levels extremely high for our customers, um, you know, on the business side running 30-second ASAs even over the last couple of weeks. So uh, really a, a huge benefit of having the deployment already executed is we went into, um, as we went into this, there was some, we did have some unseen uh, opportunities. You know, I don't think any of us in our business continuity plan for not being able to get into the site to get the equipment needed for folks to work from home. So we had some challenges that we had to work through, but even with those, we were able to execute very quickly for our customer base. That's, um, you know, one might say good planning to have had this, uh, or good, good on you to have had this in place prior to this, uh, this challenge here. Peter, you know, obviously, Current times cause uh, us to react differently and, and adapt very quickly. What implication do you see from your perspective with current environment as it relates to work at home? Um, it, uh, the current circumstances, as you say, have, have dictated some very, uh, I would say, uh, some, some very fast moves by a lot of different organizations. Look, the reality is that consumers today are going to be more conscious about being able to contact enterprises from which they're buying products and services in many different domains. I think about the, uh, the ability of somebody to be able to contact an airline to deal with either canceling or postponing a flight or getting a flight moved up. Think about hotel reservations. Think about perhaps being able to get in touch with a healthcare insurer or a healthcare provider. The, the capacity for an organization to be able to service these consumers, whether it's through digital means or voice means, is going to be crucial. It's going to be exceptional. And the fact that so many companies have decided that they need to embrace work at home and take work at home as the manner in which they're going to be able to engage and to be able to meet and exceed the consumer's expectations through this pandemic crisis, I, I think speaks volumes to its uh, capacity to be agile, as well as the model's capacity to drive high level levels of service. The, the reality is we've seen shutdowns in a whole series of jurisdictions around the world. Being able to virtualize work and be able to, being able to do it from home, from the residences of individuals in a compliant manner and in an efficient manner is so, so important. And I think this is why we're seeing the perhaps organizations that might not have looked at work at home in the past uh, have, have decided to embrace it or at least give it a try as a means of being able to get through what promised to be a series of very challenging weeks or months ahead. So, so Scott, you if know, I might put this to you, uh, Peter, based on uh, Peter's last comment about uh, what companies might have not contemplated about doing work at home prior to this, what advice would you give companies that are, you know, they, they may be forced to do it now, but in a longer term perspective, what advice would you give companies? Yeah, I think. You know, most companies have now moved from do I want to do work from home to how do I do work from home. And a couple of key areas that, that I think we learned over the years. One, make sure there's a real focus on your leadership um, around how to effectively manage remote work resources. It is not done the same way as, as when you have folks that are in the office every day. Um, so make sure that that leadership focus is there. Um, another key point is, you know, I think we're moving to the realm where this is going to be more normal that we have to implement things like this going forward. And I wouldn't wait for um, business continuity disaster recovery plans to have to enact this. 
I would look at it as having some percentage of your workforce always use, utilizing this. Uh, it helps you keep your technology current. It makes um, you better at it so that when you do have to implement it, you're ready to implement uh, effectively. Uh, and the last piece I would say is there's a lot of ways to manage your employee base with good policies, practices, and, and um, again, back to that leadership that I think can make this much more effective than just, hey, here's, here's a computer, go home, and, and good luck. Yeah, and, and Terry, I think you, um, you had a perspective on kind of the balance between work at home and, and how you leverage that. It's, it's true, and, and I want to go back to what Scott said earlier. The, the, the best DRP plans on the planet don't take into consideration the government saying you can't come into work. So learning from this and having work at home be part of the overall uh, business as usual strategy so when COVID-20 or COVID-21 or whatever, something that we don't even know about yet hits, we have this resource available to us is really, really prudent. Uh, and, and I just want to say, you know, to the company, you know, to watch us mobilize the thousands of workstations that we've done over the last several weeks uh, it is truly a testament to, to teleperformance and the global collaboration that we have. And, you know, the, our IT folks, our operational folks, our biz dev folks, our, our client services folks have just done an amazing job of, of putting it out there because it's truly unprecedented. So uh, uh, we've had several questions come in, and thank you so much for these questions. I'll put one out to the group, a couple out to the group. Do you usually issue computer equipment or have people use personal devices and or virtual desktop session? Uh, Scott, do you have a strategy there? Yeah, it really depends on your deployment. So, you know, um, personal machines and, and using a connection in it definitely works. Uh, we've seen some real success from using uh, technology like WISE terminals where it's it's much cheaper than a computer and using that to to log in um, the in getting back into the the leadership piece of this one of the deployment methods that's been very successful for us is using a 3-2 model where you have employees who are in the office for their staff meeting for the connection with with the rest of the team um, and, and then three days a week that they're working from home. So kind of splitting up the work week and getting the benefits of being um, around the team and that collaboration, but also the, the flexibility and employee morale of, of the work from home program. And if you have the right technology solution, you can allow them to, to move that equipment or have uh, machines in both locations without a significant increase in cost. And I think we've had a lot of questions come up around security, both actually during this webinar and even during the registration process. So let's jump to, right to that because there's a lot of questions around um, how, do you, how do you ensure PCI, HIPAA uh, requirements if, need to be, if needed. Uh, Peter, I'll start with you then on this. You know, from your perspective, how do companies, how have you seen companies overcome these security issues because they're they very real and, and they're probably the number one concern, I think, uh, for organizations as they begin to think about work at home. Amit, I think that you're bang on with that comment. As far as I've been covering this market and I've been watching work at home and analyzing work at home since the midpoint of the 2000s, security has been the omnipresent elephant in the room, to use a, to use a pun, uh, in regards to what has probably been the biggest inhibitor or the biggest obstacle for executives to consider using this business model. In regards to how organizations have successfully overcome the security concern, I, I think it really comes down to a couple of things. People, it comes down to processes, and it comes down to the technology. Now, from the people standpoint, one of the things that I have witnessed and I've seen done very, very well has been the screening of agents, the, the extent to which work-at-home agents are, are vetted uh, in terms of their onboarding process, not just in terms of their skills, competencies, experience, but also using elements such as police checks or credit checks, depending on the organization in question and depending on the function in question. That's a great way 
way to figure out how how you can best bring on the right type of person who's going to be able to tick the right boxes from a skills perspective and is going to be a minimal risk when it comes to fraud. Equally, having the right processes in place to make sure that if there is a concern about a security breach, that a lockdown on a particular agent's uh, access or their capacity to access information is taken care of and, and blocked as, as quickly as possible. And then there comes down to the technology end, making sure that desktops are secure, making sure that the technology is in place on each one of the workstations to limit the extent to which they can access sensitive information while still delivering great interactions. As I say, it all depends on the organization in question. It depends what they deploy. But I've seen really, really good ways of managing work at home in this regard. And it, when it comes down to the people, the process and the technology are, are in place, the work at home solution is gonna work very well. And Peter, just to make sure uh, we're all clear about this, you're talking about this on a global basis, right? So where in Europe you have GDPR issues or you have different privacy mm -hmm. issues in different regions, jurisdictions, yeah. you've seen where companies have been able to overcome this across the world. Very much so, and I'm glad that you raised that point because work at home is, is really a global business model at this point. Uh, I've seen more take up of virtual working or home based working in locations such as the European Union or countries that, that aren't necessarily part of the European Union. I've seen it taken up in Australia, New Zealand. We're seeing more in what would be traditional offshore delivery markets where the work would be done in contact center facilities, but now we're starting to see the green shoots in many of these spots where work at home is being done uh, from, from the standpoint of not necessarily in the contact center but from individuals residences now so it exactly to your to your comment uh, work at home organizations or organizations deploying work at home are being able to work within the, the parameters of different compliance regulations that might be related to information security or data protection within these different countries Great, thank Peter, you. would you say that I see if you several Sorry, go ahead, I, just, I just want to jump in there a minute. So, Peter, would you say that once we once we start to identify what is it that we're trying to solve for from a security perspective, uh, there's clearly the technology and the processes available to be able to solve for that, as opposed to just talking about a very broad general subject called security. Very much so, very much so. It's, as we were saying, it depends on the industry in question, it depends on the vertical market, it depends on the location. But I do believe that the processes and the technology are certainly in place and they, they've proven themselves in so many different facets that they can be adapted to, per, to different jurisdictions, they can be adapted to different realities in order to make sure that we're not just talking about a nebulous concept of security, but we're talking about solutions that work for an organization in a particular spot in a particular industry to make sure it's as robust as possible without compromising the ability to deliver great interactions. So Scott, how did you respond to your leadership when you were faced with this question when you started this several years ago? Yeah, I think Terry hit it right on. I think it's easy to hide behind this broad brush called security and you really need to get into what is it you're trying to solve for. Is it a CPI and I concern? Is it a policy or a compliance regulation concern, and then drilling into, okay, how do you overcome that? Um, e even at the office, we all deal with those security risks, those uh, CP&I risks, and, and we have ways to overcome it. You can do the same thing in a work from home environment. You just have to take each problem one at a time uh, and, and determine what the best um, outcome is that's, that's possible for you. Great, thank you. Once again, thanks for everybody's questions. We have tons of them coming in, so I'm trying to walk through them and paraphrase them and, and collect some of these questions together. Um, Scott, uh, was your security risk compliance teams, were they involved in the process um, as, as you went through this? Absolutely. Our, our security, our legal, our compliance, our IT groups um, were heavily engaged in um, you really have to bring everybody together, not just the operations, to, to do this effectively. Um, talk about bringing everybody together. I'm going to jump to the question and answer session because we've hit several of them. Uh, so this question is, how do you keep motivation within agents and morale high, especially those that see um, contact centers maybe a temporary 
uh, job between school and university. Scott, yeah, can I put I'll that out to you? This one. Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll go back to that leadership training that we have, but um, the other piece I'll point out here is without doing much, you're going to see uh, significantly higher employee satisfaction. It, it happens naturally. Um, the flexibility for individuals, the the time they benefit from not commuting to the office, um, you typically saw, see much higher employee satisfaction. Um, and, and as I pointed to earlier, dramatically lower attrition as you move to this model. Even if it's only some of their work week, um, you still see the full benefits. Thank you. Um, the next question, and uh, Pete and Terry, I might put this out to both of you since you work with many different clients across different jurisdictions or different industries and different company types. The question is, is there an industry or process type or work type that does not work well in a work-at-home environment? It, it's a very Peter, good question. Um, it, sure, thanks, Terry. Uh, Amit, I think it's a very good question. Uh, from what I've seen, there, there's not necessarily been a delineation on a process or a work type that doesn't work well with work at home or, or an industry for that matter. What I think it comes down to is how it's deployed. Uh, you know, what, what is the agent profile that's being recruited or that's being utilized to, to deliver the work? Uh, what is the, what are the techniques that are being put into place in order to ensure that the agents have what they need to deliver robust interactions? What are the mechanisms that are in place to ensure ongoing training of the agents and, and ongoing to, to the question that, that we just had uh, right before this one to make sure that morale is high? Organizations that can get this right tend to do very well regardless of the function or regardless of the industry. I think it's when there's an assumption that you can unilaterally take the processes that worked well in the contact center and, and automatically assume that they're going to work well when you're delivering at home. A lot of times that falls apart. Uh, equally, I, I think that organizations that don't put necessarily the thought that they need to into how to manage a virtual team that might be around a city, a state, or province, or even a country, that's when you start seeing th the wheels come off as well. I, it all comes down to, to the three Ps, planning, planning, and planning. <laughs> it's just to add to that. Up. Yeah, I mean, just to add to that, it, it's all about engagement. And and Scott hit it earlier, and, and Peter just followed up on it. If if we're not engaging with our employees, and the technology is certainly available to do that today more than ever before, uh, then it, it doesn't matter what type of work we're going to do, it's going to struggle. So all of our operational best practices that we have are, are, are resident in our work at home model. It's just done remotely and, and it's about engagement. You can still have a pizza party remotely. You can still celebrate birthday parties remotely. You can still congratulate people remotely. You just have to think differently about it. And if you do that, Great, so there isn't a line of business out there that you can't, that you can't do successfully. So to that point about engagement, I'll end with this one last question. We have just about a minute here, and the question is, uh, what changes have you made in the way you evaluate and coach an advisor uh, that's working remote? And Scott, maybe throw this out to you and from your, your experience. Yeah, um, I think Terry hit right on that you can still do those same things. We have had some of our teams, some of our, our deployments where we've used work at home as an incentive, uh, where if you perform at a high level, you basically get to utilize that benefit. Uh, if your performance dips, then you, you have to come back into the office. Uh, that doesn't always work, and it's definitely not something that we've utilized across the board, but one of the techniques that we've used. But I think the big one is really, like, like Terry said, uh, make sure that you're still utilizing all your normal techniques. Don't stop doing them because the folks are remote. And the technology has improved so much over the years to help do that and still have effective team meetings, video conferences, uh, and celebrations. Great, thank you so much. Um, with that, we come to the end of today's TP Talks. As a reminder for everybody on this webinar, there's the resource library 
on uh, that you can download some content, please do so. Visit another TP Talks. We'll be continuing this series over the coming weeks and months. It's obviously a very topical subject. For those questions that you submitted, we got tons of them, and I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all, but we will respond to you via email. So rest assured, um, you will continue this dialogue with this group of panelists. Scott, Peter, Terry, thank you so much for your insights today. And thank you so much for taking time out of, I know, our very busy schedules. And for everybody on the call, please stay safe. Thank you for attending today's TP Talks. Have a great day.